In today's video tutorial, we'll be checking out our OpenCart Warehouse Management System Flutter mobile application backend configuration settings in the first place. Hi, and welcome back to this new video tutorial of OpenCart. In today's video tutorial, we'll be checking out our OpenCart Warehouse Management System Flutter mobile application backend configuration settings in the first place. So what we'll be doing is we'll be checking how in the first place the admin of the OpenCart web store would be able to add and manage the warehouses from the admin backend panel, how we'll be able to add and manage the staff members, how we'll be able to check the orders that have been assigned to the staff members of the different warehouses there and check the different statuses of the uh, assigned orders there. Apart from that, we'll also be seeing how we'll be able to uh, basically print out the tote barcodes there and the rest of the workflow or the initial configuration settings as well in the admin backend panel for the warehouse management system itself for the OpenGuard uh, platform there. But before I proceed further with this particular video tutorial today, please do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to receive the latest updates from our end. And if you find this particular video helpful, then do kindly give it a thumbs up. So let's hop onto the admin backend panel of OpenCart in the first place and let's see the complete workflow at the admin backend panel for the same. So for the same, let's hop onto the admin backend panel now. So right now what I'll, I have done is that I'm at the admin backend panel of the OpenCart there and what I'll be doing is I'll be initially logging into the admin backend panel by entering the username, password and tapping on the login button thereafter. So let's log into the admin backend panel first. So here I'll be tapping on the login button and as soon as we have tapped on the login button, uh, we'll be able to see the uh, dashboard of the OpenCart admin backend panel as you can see. And on the left hand side panel, you can see that we have the warehouse management system and under the warehouse management system, we have different options like warehouses where we can add and manage the warehouses. We have the orders wherein we can see the orders that we have assigned to different warehouses there or to the uh, staff members and we can check the status of each order as well whether the tote has been assigned or not whether it has been initiated or whether it has been packed or not so we'll be seeing that as well in a while from now then we have the option to add and manage the staff members there and after you have uh, created the warehouses you can create the staff members and you can assign the staff members to the various uh, what we say as the warehouses as per your own requirement there and then we have the tote section that displays the complete list of totes for each of the warehouses there and from here uh, you can print the uh, what we say as the tote barcodes uh, for applying the barcodes to the totes uh, in the respective warehouses there itself. Now, apart from this, we also have some initial configuration settings for this uh, particular plugin. For that, what you need to do is you need to navigate through extensions, extensions, and here on the choose the extension type, you have to choose modules, and here you'll find the warehouse management system. And here you have to tap on the edit option. After tapping on the edit option, you can see we have a few uh, configuration settings for the warehouse management system there. The very first option that we have here is the module status. So if you want to enable the warehouse management system for your web store, then you can enable it out. Then we have the barcode width. Here you can set the width of your barcode that would be generated. Then we have the barcode print option, whether you want to generate the or generate only the barcode or you want to generate the barcode with the barcode number. You want to generate the barcode with the product name. You want to generate the barcode with the product name and the barcode number as well. Then you have the generate barcode with. We want to generate the barcode with the product ID, UPC, SKU, or the EAN number. So you can select as per your own requirement there. Then you have the warehouse columns per page. So basically, you have to uh, set the numeric value here to show the number of columns to the list of warehouse when you will assign any product. In the similar way, manner, you can set up the warehouse rows per page as well. And here you have to show the number of rows to list for warehouse when you will assign any product to the same there. Now after you're done with this particular configuration, just tap here on the save button and the particular configuration settings would be saved. So right now I don't have the permission to save the same because I'm using this demo section there. Now let's come back to the warehouse management system and let's go to the warehouse section where we can add and manage the warehouses. So under this particular section, you will be able to find the complete list of warehouses that you have already created. You can manage the warehouses by editing them up or you can assign the products to the warehouses by tapping on the manage product button. 
On the manage product button, you'll be able to assign the warehouse quantity for the product and you'll be able to assign the, row, uh, the, 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 the what we say as the rows or the shelves where that particular product would be available at. So I'll be showing you that as well in a while from now. And to add a particular warehouse, what you need to do is you need to just tap on the add button at the top right hand corner of the page there. So if I tap here on the add new button, this particular section would uh, come up and here you have to enable this warehouse. Then you have to give the warehouse title, say for example, test warehouse. You have to give the uh, number of rows for the same number of columns, number of shells, number of racks and the number of totes that you want to generate for this particular uh, warehouse. After you're done with this, you have to tap here on the save button to save the particular warehouse. And you can see that the test warehouse has been created with five rows, five columns, five shells, five racks and 10 totes there. The status is enabled and the date edit is visible. Now, if I want to edit it, I can edit it from this particular section. Otherwise, if I want to assign some products to this warehouse, I can tap here on the manage product section. Under the manage product section, we'll be able to see the complete list of products within the store there. And from here, we can see the online quantity as well as uh, we can set the warehouse quantity for the product. So for example, I want to assign the Apple Cinema 30 degrees uh, uh, to this warehouse and I can set the quantity from here. For example, I've set it as, let's set it as 22. After setting the warehouse quantity to, quantity as 22 for the product, that's the Apple Cinema. The online product quantity is uh, what we say as the 790 and 22 quantity has been set as the warehouse quantity for this particular product. And we have the assigned position. Now to assign the position, I'll tap here on the assign option. And here you can see that uh, we can choose the location uh, for the uh, test warehouse here and here you can see the uh, indications as well one of them is empty semi empty half full full and selected product uh, section so here you can see that here we have column one column two we had set it as column five so we have five columns five rows and five racks are there for the same right and the five rows are also visible here as you can see now if i want to assign the product to row one column one shelf one then i can tap on that and here i can assign it assign the product to a particular row for example i want to assign it to the row one with the particular quantity that's 15. i can do that up and i can tap here on the assign product and you can see that the product has been assigned to the row one column one shelf one there right now let's close it out and here you can see that the assigned position is row one column one shelf one rack one with the quantity 22 22 quantities are assigned to this particular position that we have chosen it uh, for the product that's the apple cinema 30 degrees so <clears throat> apart from that you can also print the barcodes for the products as per the requirement there or you can generate the barcodes for the products as well if uh, for any uh, product there's no barcode there then you can tap here on the generate barcode otherwise you can print the barcodes by tapping on the print barcode and enter the number of here you have to enter the number of barcode slips for each product for example for each product if you want to generate two then you need to tap here on the print all and this would basically uh, generate the okay so what we need to do is we need to select the product first then tap on the print barcode enter the number of quantity of barcodes that we want to generate and then tap on the print all and you can see that uh, the particular barcodes would be generated according to the configuration settings for the barcode generation there. And then you can tap here on the print button to print the barcodes there. Now let's go back. So this was how we can create uh, and manage the warehouses and how we can assign the products and uh, assign the rows uh, or the columns or the particular position for the product within the warehouse there itself. Then we have the order section. And the order section, you can see that we have different orders. This was the order uh, that we had placed in the previous video as we had shown you for the front end workflow of the uh, particular mobile application itself for the Android devices there. And uh, for this, you can see that uh, the warehouse assigned was for the order number 16, the warehouse assigned was warehouse movables. The staff member was Smiddo. The assigned tote was one assigned tote was there. And the status was packed for that. For some, it started. For some it's initiated as you can see right now and for each we can uh, tap on the edit option as well under the actions column and we'll be taken to the particular order details page and wherein if you want you can also 
change the warehouse or the staff members as per your own requirement that as required. Then under the staff, you'll be able to see the complete list of staff members that you've created and assigned to the different warehouses there. To add a particular staff member, you just need to tap here on the add button. And this would bring up this particular section wherein you have to enable the staff member, choose the warehouse where you, uh, to which you want to assign the, uh, the staff member to, enter his first name, last name, his email, his telephone number, the password, the uh, confirmed password has to be entered, then the address line, city, postcode, country and state has to be selected and then you just need to tap here on the save button to save the particular uh, staff member. Then coming to the tote section, uh, here according to the different warehouses, you'll find the different tote uh, barcodes there. So for warehouse mobile, we have around, let's see how many have, 15 barcodes are there for electronics and computers. Uh, we have five and I can filter out the barcodes as well. So let's choose the test warehouse and let's filter it out. We had set it as 12, I remember if I remember. 10 had been set up, so 10 barcodes are there. If I want to print the mark, uh, barcodes for the uh, totes there, I can tap here on the print button and I can print the one as per the requirement by choosing a printer here. I can print this uh, barcode on the tote itself, right? So yes, these were the different options uh, that we get uh, in the admin backend panel for the open cart warehouse management system, Flutter mobile application there backend configuration settings for the same and I hope that this particular video helped you out in understanding the workflow of the same. If you still have any questions, queries, suggestions or requirements regarding the same then you can anytime get back to us at support at the rate of uh, webcool.com or you can raise a ticket at webcool.ubidus.com as well. Apart from that, if you find this particular video helpful then do kindly give it a thumbs up. And lastly, thanks for watching this particular video and have a great day ahead.